Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Shoesmiths Live video. Today I am joined by Gaius Powell who is our uh, Director of Business Development at Shoesmiths and we are filming from our Birmingham office today. So welcome Gaius. Thank you Sam. Thanks for being on today. Um, we're going to be talking all about business development, yep. um, kind of what uh, clients actually want from their lawyers and their law firm and also talking about how that can impact you at that application stage and obviously when you're a trainee and a solicitor as well. I always like to know where you are watching us from. So I mentioned we're in Birmingham, it's raining, typical. Um, so where are you watching from and also what is the weather like where you are? Um, hopefully you are in a sunnier climate than us. And also if you've got any friends or colleagues that you think might want to watch this video, then do tag them in the comments. They will be able to jump on and watch this even after we're live um, because this will be posted onto our Facebook page and we also share it to YouTube as well. So anybody that can't stick around for the whole time that we're live, you can catch up later. Um, okay, so let's get straight in. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit as well about your role and how it impacts upon the firm's growth, sure. the strategy, yeah, 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 the vision yeah. of the firm. Yeah. So it's going to be a really, um, really interesting chat today, I think, which will give you a really good overview of a different side to a law firm and of course give you an idea of the different types of roles that we do recruit into a law yes. firm aside yeah. from lawyers. Um, so let's jump straight into the interview. So you've spent most of your career in professional services Indeed. and at law firms um, and um, a number of roles at director level as well and that's you've joined us as a director. So can you tell me a little bit about kind of your early career from your studies? Sure, yeah absolutely. So uh, I went to university to study politics and all things uh, back in the mid uh, 80s and actually in my dissertation in my final year I did it on political marketing which is around the impact of party political broadcasts or not in terms of people having actually voted. Uh, and then from there my first proper job having sort of developed this interest in marketing I managed to secure, I was very lucky in fact, I was in the right place at the right time, fake can deal with a good hand can't it at times, walking past the recruitment consultants, literally was in the window account handler required for advertising agency. I thought, well, I haven't really got the experience, but I'll give it a go. So I managed to get the job at a reduced level. Uh, and during that time, I worked on everything from, would you believe it, carpet tiles to um, portable buildings. But one of the firms I acted for as a client was a law firm. Very early days after deregulation, going way, way back. Uh, I really liked it. I liked the intangible nature of it. The fact that it wasn't a carpet tile or a toothpaste or something like that. It was, it was uh, dealing with big, very, very bright people uh, around a service aspect rather than anything else. And then I was very lucky again. When you look back at CVs, all look as if it's deliberate, don't they? But in this situation, perhaps it wasn't. I was looking for a new job, having been in the house at one of my clients, in fact, after leaving the agency, and this job came up for a law firm in Sheffield. And, uh, and I got it, and that was 24. I've nearly 25 million years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I've deliberately chosen uh, over the years, again, I think I've been lucky to join firms at interesting stages of their evolutions. And having joined Shoesmiths in 2017 now, it just seemed the fit was really, really good. You know, the firm's very much on the up, got ambition, confidence. I really like the culture when I met the people. Um, and so I can't believe it's, it's, you know, this will be my third year in July. Mm. So yeah, it's flown by. Okay, thank you. Um, so you've kind of always had that, that marketing hat on, yeah. so great to, to hear that was from an early stage. And I think you're right, it always seems like careers over a, on a CV look like they've really yeah, been well designed yeah, and the yeah. path flows. But actually when you look back at many people's kind of early stages, a lot of things happen by accident and being in the right place at the right Absolutely time. Absolutely, makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, so just a reminder that you can ask any questions that you've got for myself or Gaius throughout the video. Just um, pop them in the comments and we will answer your questions live for you. Um, so I've got a few more questions to continue with though before we get to those. Um, so some people watching might not realise, um, well firstly, that a law firm has uh, such a large business development function um, in terms of a kind of service that you're providing internally. Sure. And they might not um, realise the roles that fall under okay. business development. So yep. can you give us a bit of an overview of the structure and what people do? Okay, sure. So I think it's, it's worth going back to almost first principles of life as to what the role of the BD director, we call them directorates at, at Shoesmiths, uh, entails. And essentially, really, it is to help generate the firm, work with the firm, to generate revenue that's strategically aligned. In other words, we're trying to generate money for the firm that's from clients and businesses and sectors that we're particularly interested in and want to grow. That's really, really important. It comes back to that. That's essentially it. 
Where I think we're particularly strong, and the firm's culture of choosing this is strong, mm. is around getting the voice of the client into those considerations. We really do think very, very hard and act as best as we can in terms of what does this mean to the client, how can we make the client's life easier, and so on. All goes back, of course, for those unfamiliar with the Schusterness a vision around client experience. Yeah. That's what we want to be known for. Yeah. So, and our most important thing, really, thinking about the client experience. Absolutely, and how yeah. we can make sure we deliver against that. Mm. Um, so, but the team is divided, uh, uh, without boring you with a structured chart, uh, there's about 35 of us, full time equivalent uh, to growing teams, it happens, uh, primarily divided into two real areas. One around reputation, how we approach and enhance the market with our thinking, whether that be press releases, website. Uh, events, for example, thought leadership, by getting comment and commentary out mm. to the out to the business, uh, and then within sort of the centre, we have a, a growing and, and very strong, I think, research team again to help get the voice of the clients, what's going on in the market, so that when we've got client meetings, tenders, proposals, whatever there might be, obviously our, our our partners and our lawyers and, and even trainees will have an understanding of what our clients do, but that sort of refresher or update as to this is what's going on in the sector is really really important. We also make sure we start data accordingly. So in other words, we can work out what clients have been to what events, uh, what clients have clicked on things that they may have seen on the website or on our electronic newsletters to again assess whether we're producing the right type of material. And then I guess on the other side of the team, if you want to look at it that way, um, there is the relationship of bids side of the life. Again, I think we're, I wouldn't say we're unique, that's a bit of a strong word, but the trust and confidence that the clients have in us and the business has in us is evidenced by the fact that a lot of that team are incredibly client facing. They work hand in glove with some of our client partners, the ones that are allocated to particular clients, undertaking relationship meetings, client listings as we call them about how we perform, what things we could have done better, what we could do more of, whether that's after a pitch or as part of a general relationship discussion. Uh, so I think that's really, really important that we, we carry out those things. So our, our job is to help the firm generate that strategic aligned <coughs> revenue. And we do that primarily by making sure we have a, uh, a good, to use a bit of jargon, share of voice in the market compared to the competitors, and we're producing material that's relevant to those clients and they want to come and talk to us. Um, it's, it all resonates back to that client experience. That's the fundamental, yeah. fundamental thing. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, so. The graduate recruitment team do a lot of um, kind of marketing of, of the firm out to our watchers and our yep, trainee yep, prospective yep. trainee solicitors, and we do a lot of social media and we produce a lot of articles and things like that. So um, that is really what falls under BD as well. But you're talking about it more in attracting the clients being able to deliver the correct blogs and articles out to the clients they're interested all, all of that. Yeah, on the I mean, website. At website. There's a multitude of tools we can use um, and we're in a good place at the moment, particularly on our content push. What well, I mean by content, again, sounds like a jar, but basically news uh, and a commentary that's a bit relevant to the clients about how we can get that out to the quicker, more digestible format and also appeal to the different audiences we have. We're a, you know, a multi-service business. Mm everything around employment, real estate and our personal advisory uh, work needs to be promoted and, and hit the right audiences. So it's, uh, it's quite dynamic. Yeah. You, um, you, so you spoke about in terms of your own career, you've always been focused on um, professional services and kind of uh, businesses that, so marketing businesses that provide a service, maybe yeah. apart from the carpet tiles. Yes. Um, I always wonder when I'm uh, prom promoting Shoesmiths as a brand and an yes. employer that it would be much easier to work for um, a brand that had an actual tangible product. So, for example, um, a handbag to sell. Or okay, okay. Do you, what do you think about that bet between um, brands where they have actual products and the difference between marketing a service? Yeah, no, sure. Why it's, is it the surfaces that you like? Uh, uh, partly because of the fact it's, it, it's much more human. It's a human interaction. You know, we're very strong, one of our, our brand uh, attributes, it's about people, relationships and results. And the people and relationship side are so fundamental. Mm. Now, of course, without getting majorly distracted about the rise of technology and use of artificial intelligence and all that kind of, uh, kind, of kind of stuff, at its core, this is a human service we're providing yeah. to fellow beings, if you like. Whereas the handbag example <laughs> you give it Sam, is a physical thing. Yes, you'll have a perception of the brand that manufactures that handbag. And the important thing about brands, of course, is that the stronger the brand you've got, the more emotional attachment you get from the people that use your service. If you've got no brand presence, 
then there's no emotional connection. Mm. And that's what we want. And I think that's why it's right that we focus on, as I say, the people relationships and results yeah. base. How are we going to make it better for our clients in the results aspect? And we, we have good people, we have the clients have good people, and it's based on making those relationships as strong as possible. Yeah. I think um, I think she's Miss absolutely makes um, my job at selling she's Miss an employer easier because right. we have such a strong brand we have very strong culture and values people that really believe yeah. in what yeah. we, we do and the things that we stand for and also we have amazing offices so that makes pretty good for pictures. it does make a difference yeah it does make a difference. it works pretty well for Instagram <laughs> um, okay so let's move on then so I want to talk a little bit more about your specific um, role and Really, I'm going to ask you to give me a typical day, but I feel like the answer there might be there is no typical. Well, so. it's first because I thought, well, um, how do I describe what I do? You know, I'm out going to be boring and reading up the job description. Um, and as it happens, today is quite coincidentally helpful for that. So, for example, I'm not in the meetings. I'm here with you, of course. Um, but uh, I met some members of our team, the digital team and the PR team, are having a, a discussion today about social media and our yeah. application of that, how we can enhance what we do uh, with that regard. You mentioned about the offices, completely coincidentally. Um, of course, I'm at Milton Keynes office. Mo moves in on the over the weekend and yeah. opens a business on the yeah. 9th. So, uh, again, members of my team have been working very hard in terms of the promotion and communication of that move. It's all coming to a head for next week, as I say. Uh, and I've already had a discussion uh, today around uh, product and, and service line development. You mentioned earlier about services versus products, if you like, or services versus physical things. And there is a trend in the market, undoubtedly, to make it easier for clients to see what we do mm. in terms of our product and service development. In other words, it's not just about coming up with a snazzy name, but articulating what we do and how we do it and how it benefits the client, as opposed to simply say, and I'm not picking on real estate, for example, or I could do it with employment. Um, we do real estate law or we do employment law. That's fine, but what does that mean in a client mm. context, apart from the fact that we provide legal support? How does employment law help our clients? Well, employment law helps our clients, hopefully, be as productive as possible. That's what we want our clients to be, and that's yeah. what they want to be, mm. and then our employment law support should be doing that. Yes, it's through employment law, but it's the ultimate benefit to the client that I think, I think we've been pretty good at, to be fair, uh, and where I think some law firms struggle with that point of differentiation. They often claim that they're big, very large, lots of offices, international, do all this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, but how does that actually relate to the client? It goes yeah. back to client experience. Yeah, and what, what the client really wants. What the client really yeah. wants, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. thank you. Um, so just a reminder that you can ask us questions at any time, and I will come to your questions in a second, and we'll answer them live for you. If you've got a friend or a colleague who you think would benefit from watching this video as well, make sure you tag them in the comments so they can come and watch us after the live broadcast today. Um, okay, so then kind of um, looking at the role that business development plays at Shoesmiths, mm -hmm. um, what are the key priorities that you're looking at from your directorate in terms of moving Shoesmiths forward? Fine, okay. Uh, with all common all directorates, you know, in, in Shoesmiths again, maybe there's a benefit of the audience that aren't familiar with uh, directorates or support functions in, in law firms, as ourselves, of course, in Shoesmiths is the HR function, human resources, learning and development. Strategic change, which is about program management and change, quality and risk, and, yeah. and information services. All of us are there, both individually and increasingly collaboratively, to help the firm deliver its strategy. Yeah. That's what we're there to do. We don't obviously want to go off on a tangent and just do our own stuff. That'd be very wrong. Um, and the firm has a sort of three year strategy cycle, which I think I know you've discussed in the previous one yeah. with Peter Duff, for example. Yeah. Um, and that three year cycle is really helpful for us. It's sort of enough of a time period without being way, way, way in advance or too, too short term. And certainly the, the strategy the firm's got at the moment for emphasising its UK emphasis. You know, that we are rare, I think, at the moment. Everybody's got this sort of, um, not everybody, but a lot of the competitors have got this sort of international dash for mass, as it's described, and they just want to get bigger. Whereas actually, I think our point of differentiation, distinction, the fact we are UK focused. Mm. We do do international work, don't get me wrong, both inbound and outbound to the UK. But overall, our focus is on the UK. It's how we can help the business ensure that happens. Think of opportunities, for example, the fact that we're in, in Northern Ireland, the fact that we're in, in Scotland, the fact that we're in England, of course. How can we think of opportunities across those three areas, for one mm. thing, uh, for particular, particular clients? There's a big push, I think, that we've got um, in terms of uh, for example, our corporate client base. Obviously, we do a bright breadth of work, for, let's say, for real estate developers and, and corporates themselves, but a particular push on the corporate side of life 
it's an area where we've got strength, there is considerable potential in our existing client base, we mustn't forget the existing clients of course, um, and frankly it's obviously better for us in a way to have that balance of new new clients as well as existing clients yeah. to provide newer and deeper services to. Uh, and that's where I think particularly on the relationship and bid side, obviously we work very closely with the client partners to achieve that. But I think at a sort of overarching level, the, the, the two particular things I think are worth touching on. One is the, the phrase used earlier about thought leadership. It's a, it is a crowded market out there. Mm. To get noise and get traction, it, yes, it's to some extent it's about volume, but it's about quality of content. And I think the market increasingly these days is expecting its lawyers to have opinions yeah. as opposed to and I don't, I'm not looking at it because I'm not a lawyer. Technical brilliance is fine, of course it's really, really important. But they want you to have an understanding about what's going on in their market and their sector. Yeah. Uh, and to bring insight that you've seen from other transactions you've worked on, rather than not... Yeah. I mean, there's obviously commercial confidentiality, but you'll have insights, so let's shout about them. And some lawyers are quite reticent than that. They feel uncomfortable about having an opinion. Um, but it's an increasing trend. Some of our guys and girls are very, very good at it. I uh, just need a bit more encouragement and support as to how to go about that. So that's a real trend that we're trying to push at the moment. Mm. We're always good at it, not better at a lot of firms and a lot of things. Mm. So why not shout about it a bit more and have that opinion, demonstrate yeah. our understanding? You know, why should we do it more? Uh, but ultimately, that all comes back to, again, without sounds like I'm repeating myself, comes back down to the vision thing around the client experience. I don't mean to dismiss it by saying vision thing, but it's, uh, you know, how is this going to make a difference to our clients? Yeah. And that could be everything from, for example, in the last... I can't remember, was it November time, we relaunched the website, of yeah. course. Uh, and it wasn't just to put out a, a prettier, more up-to-date design website, as good as it is, don't get me wrong, in terms of that. Uh, very proud of it. It's about client experience. How easy is it for our clients to find the information they want? Yeah. Everything from, at a very simple level, how do I get to an office, to what is the latest content they've produced on this particular area of law? How do I find a particular person I'm going to at a seminar? All of that's about client experience, yeah. and if it's just thought of as a website, then I think people are missing our trick, frankly. Yeah. And that's what we're focused on, and that's we're continually assessing and testing how does this improve the client experience. So, if um, people aren't aware of kind of some of those bits that you've talked yeah. about on the website, um, they're helpful for you at application stage because you could, um, if you met a, a partner or a solicitor at an event from Shoe Smith, then you could go and find them on our People Absolutely. Finder on the website. Yeah. They'd have a little bio about them and also um, some of the work that they've been involved in. So, it can be really useful for kind of that first point of understanding a bit more yeah. about them. And then, secondary to that, of course, LinkedIn as well. So, a lot of our lawyers are on LinkedIn now, and that's where a lot of them are starting to share some of the thought leadership. Indeed. as well and opinions Indeed. around different things also on the website we have an insights area so you can find insights and then within that you'll find pretty much all of the content and articles and um, events and things are all shared within that area so it's a great place again to boost your commercial awareness and think about most of them are pretty short like yeah, reads, really manageable reads like around so. three three to five hundred yeah, words yeah. Really quick reads, um, because that's obviously great for our clients, but also for you to just spend a couple sure. of minutes reading them. Well, since you mentioned about the, uh, the website, Sam, I think there's one other thing that I know particularly applicants find uh, interesting, and, and quite rightly so, is around corporate responsibility. Mm. Uh, you know, the firm has a very transparent reporting approach in yeah. terms of things that we do and whether we hit our targets or not. Obviously, we hope we have most of the time. Um, and I think that's really, really helpful to people to get a sense of the feel of the firm and its priorities. Yes, of course, we're here, as I mentioned earlier, it's a BD function to help the firm generate strategically mm -hmm. line re uh, revenue. But equally important is about how we, are, how we are act as a business. Yeah. And I, that corporate responsibility area, I think there's lots of nuggets of information in there. We now hopefully made it easy for people to find yeah. that uh, any applicant or protective, potential supplier, potential client are increasingly interested in. So if people are going to have a play on the website also encourage them to look at that yeah and that's where you'll find information about our environmental policies exactly. recycling and carbon neutral um, and diversity and inclusion as well so Indeed. yeah really good area um, okay so aside from typical legal advice which yeah. is what our lawyers provide um, quality legal advice hopefully um, what are the other things that might attract a client to a particular law firm okay well, there's, there's two stages there, I guess. There's the attraction and then there's the, re the retention, okay, yeah. retention piece. Uh, I mean, the attraction could be anything. It could be 
for example, some of the best work we've ever received uh, has been by acting on the other side of a client. In other words, whether it be a litigation on the other side of a, a non, non litigious, non contentious piece of work. I said, well, look, these guys know what they're doing, I actually quite like the way they work. Uh, so that could be one, one way of getting the attraction through. Our overall brand awareness, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that irrespective of the size of the firm, in terms of turnover, the firm punches above its weight in terms of its market recognition. Mm. And I think the, the, the status we've now got in the market is a big help. We're sort of going to take over notice, you know. Um, and I think we're seen as a very, very credible alternative to some, to some of the more... They would like to describe themselves as a magic circle, of course. Um, uh, firms for lots and lots of work. You know, that credible alternative bit's really important. But the other bit is about the retention and development of the relationships that yeah. we touched on earlier. And I think when it comes to that, yes, the, uh, it'd be wrong to simply say the law is taken as a given because that's too extreme. But it is as much about, as we so we say, about how responsive we are, uh, and how, how much care we demonstrate to our client. It sounds a bit twee, but it's, it's really important. Yeah. How important are we and how are the client perceived to be to us? You know, that work, work's really, really important. I think the understanding about how a client likes to receive their advice, some of them like lengthy, wordy legal summaries, others are very happy to have a commercial take with the, the legal advice to back it up. Yeah. You know, it's all about helping them make the best decision for their business, or as an individual, or the best decision for them. And that clarity of advice, I think, is really, really important. So how quick do we respond? How, how clear are we in our advice? I mentioned earlier about the insight piece. I think that's really important. We've got something to bring to them outside of the law or understanding yeah. of the market. And I think the other thing I think that's a bit of detail and perhaps of particular interest to your um, uh, to potential applicants to the firm and train, trainee solicitors, there's often, it sounds really dry, uh, uh, there's lots of law firm relationship statements or there's lots of reporting that we have to do in terms of work we've got in progress or, or value added services we've provided or a range of services that have been undertaken. But that's really, really important. Mm. Um, it's, as, it's as if um, these are large, complicated relationships. If we are trying and succeeding in securing a variety of instructions over a variety of different parts of our business, working with that client, then having access to information quickly and readily, whether it be by quarterly reports, which again a lot of my team work on to help the client partners yeah. and the clients, uh, it's really, really interesting and really, really, really important. So for our more established, larger PLC type relationships, a lot of those things are in place. Whilst I wouldn't necessarily expect trainees to know the ins and outs of the service level agreement we've got with a particular client. The earlier one can get used to that type of understanding about what does the client actually like, how do they operate, what do they personally prefer, what do they dislike. Yeah, and uh, that's really, all really coming helps. back to um, being an in individual and being able to service human beings and uh, being able to deliver something that they like, which isn't the same as yeah. everybody else. Yeah, we have, we have, we each of the, each of the divisions, i.e. our employment or, uh, sorry, um, real estate for example, the division. <laughs> They have their own set of practice standards in terms of the way they will do, the way they operate. They're primarily for internal consumption. It's not for external, mm. really. And we have to adapt and work with the clients to make things as, as easy as possible for them. For example, when, for example, if we want a significant transaction or a new piece of work for a new client we've never acted for before, that handover period, how is that going to work? What do they need from us and what do we need for them to get on with the work? Of course that's important. But establishing good working practices between us is it's very important. Yeah. Lovely, thank you. Um, okay, so um, we, I've just found out that we've been nominated for um, the Legal Cheek Award for Best Firm for mm. Clients of Comments for the second year Excellent. in a row, which is great. Um, so fingers crossed for that later yep, in the yep. year. Um, but And so comments is something that we talk about quite regularly on these videos. We've sure. done a few Shoes Miss Lives and videos with some of our trainees who are on comment. So um, hopefully our viewers will be quite familiar with the benefits of a trainee's yep. comment. Um, but what other ways would a trainee be expected to get involved in business development? development once they were here? Sure. Uh, I mean, I think there's a, a, well, how can I put it, of course I would say this, uh, you know, it sees the opportunities that are there, frankly. Um, I think the greater understanding um, any any member of the firm can, can have about what it's like to work with clients is obviously really important. Uh, obviously, developing an understanding of the particular law in terms of the seat is really, really important. Yeah. But there's opportunities to support in things like our, I mentioned tenders, for example, in terms of helping create some content or checking or CVs, trainee CVs go into to tender pitches, you know, in terms of representing the team, so there will be exposure on that. And, team, and clients are increasingly want to know, not just 
quite rightly, who the front person is, who's the lead partner, but what's the depth of the team like and who are those people? That's often the case when it comes to, to tenders. I think this may sound a bit passive, but I think it's really important. Ironically, as we're doing this through, through Facebook, but in terms of social media, I think, but following our clients, mm. you know, at a not corporate level, I don't mean necessarily, you know, we could if you wanted to, and they, you know, it was all right. I suppose following the individual level, but uh, I'm thinking, for example, again, particularly on the PLC or trade organisations, um, follow them to see what the clients are up to, rather than uh, just the transaction you've got in hand. What are they trying to achieve? What issues are they facing? That's got to help with the BD side mm. of life. Uh, and as you say, with this, the the secondments, we've got any one time five to ten training secondment opportunities out there. Yeah. Um, uh, the feedback we get, as you know, is phenomenally uh, positive from both the, the secondees and the clients, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, and they are everything from you know, financial services organisation to advanced manufacturing and at different types of work as well. Yeah. So actually being able to understand what it's like from that side of the fence, so to speak, I don't mean to be divisive about it, but that's on the fence on the client side of it. What's it actually like to be in-house and to get that experience very early on, really, yeah. in, a, in a legal career, serves our serves our trainees and our future qualified solicitors incredibly well. I'm, I'm not aware of any any trainee um, that's regretted going on and having a secondment opportunity. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, you know, it's and and we are very good at um, having a balance. I think in terms of marrying up the personality, skill set, interests. Of our trainees with the type of client that, that requires or would like a trainee to come. Yeah. It's, it's it's not quite a blind date. It's far more, more sophisticated than that. But marrying up is really important, mm -hmm. and I think the time and effort we put into that, as well as the checking up on how things are going once the trainee's on to come, it's not a case of off you go. Yeah. See you in six months or three months, whatever it may be. Far from it. Um, I think that's a firm we're very, very, very good at. Um, and that's a real collaboration point actually between Absolutely. graduate recruitment and the BD team because yep. um, client account managers who manage a relationship between a client partner and a client obviously have very good knowledge of, of all the parties Indeed. involved there and so it's really important that they're then involved in that trainee development piece uh, about yeah. getting them into the right client. Indeed, yeah. Indeed. Uh, so I think the track record is, is strong, our, our client partners are obviously confident about it, otherwise they wouldn't be advocating it. Yeah. So. It's always really important to mention, of course, that comments do happen at um, a more senior level as oh, well. Of course, indeed. Yeah, and because we, we obviously focus on talking about it at trainee level because that's yeah. our predominant audience, but um, so comments can happen at any time in your career and they're always indeed. going to be beneficial because you're going to build up a personal relationship with the legal team and then bring that relationship back and uh, knowledge. Quite. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, they're, 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 they're a good thing. Yeah. Um, so just a reminder that you can ask us questions at any time. Um, I'm going to check in a second to see um, if you've popped any questions through to us and then we will answer those for you. Um, so those were all of my main questions okay. that I had to ask you. Um, so thank you so much. But do you have any questions that you want to ask me? And I will just bring up the video. Sure. Um, we, I mean, given our focus today is primarily on, on business development, uh, Sam, and, and, and the audience not solely, but... I'm always likely to be potential applicants or applicants that are part of the process. As yeah. we how, how do we, and I know the answer, but how do we um, uh, help and assess our potential uh, trainees and our trainee solicitors in relation to, to BD type activities? Yeah, so I think, so we've talked about it, but BD is important for um, our lawyers to be aware of and our trainees, and therefore that's why we're expecting to see it at a more junior level during yep. the application process. So I think there's lots of things where applicants can demonstrate their involvement in business development from right from the kind of basic commercial awareness points okay. around yes, yes. Um, yep. thinking about a business or a client that they're particularly interested in, reading a bit further around that and understanding how um, legal implications impact upon yep. that client and just understanding a bit about that business. So I think you mentioned about following uh, interested on clients on yeah, Twitter yeah, 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 or LinkedIn, yeah, yeah. then you can start doing that now um, and start to get that information yes. coming into your newsfeed. The other way um, for applicants as well would to build that commercial awareness is of course checking out our insights and learning about the clients Indeed. who we work yep. for. Um, and you, the ones that we're able to talk about are will be inside some of those insights and where we'll publish um, some of the work that we've done yep. with them. So that's a great place. And then also um, we're seeing a lot more people um, 
kind of in a bit of a study careers community now on LinkedIn and on Instagram mainly, where people are sharing their own careers advice for the benefit of others in the same position right, as them. And yeah, um, yeah. it's something that we absolutely love seeing. Um, we really try to support it from our team in terms of social media. Um, and I think that is, again, another great way of kind of demonstrating um, the understanding of brand profile, individual right. yeah. profile raising, yeah. Yeah. and how important that is and will be for the career ahead that they're going for. So yes. I don't, I'm starting to see it come through on people's CVs a bit right. more now right. and on application forms where they're talking about a blog that they have or a, a YouTube right. channel. Okay. And I think that's a really good way of demonstrating the early days of BD. Yeah. Do you, would you have any other kind of um, advice think, that you think? I th yeah, what the, when you can over research a firm, yeah. Um, but you mentioned, for example, the insight piece. Just to reiterate, I'm sure a lot of applicants look at Legal 500 and Chambers. Yeah. Um, uh, again, given the growth that the firm has had in the last 12, 18 months, there's always going to be a lag between the directories and the research cycle and mm. when the results come out. Um, but yeah, I would definitely advocate that will get a sense. And almost doing, I don't know about over, people overwork it, but. If you looked at the Legal 500 five years ago, I don't know, we're in Birmingham for Birmingham, the Legal 500 now, that would give you a, a good insight as to how the firm has changed yeah. and grown and the range of services and the depth of teams that we've, we've got. So, yeah, I mean, clearly research will help, but we are, we are doing well when it comes to Legal 500 Chambers. Yeah. Um, there was a recent report in, uh, in legal business um, uh, in terms of our, our, our standing, and we do, again, we punch above our way. Clearly much more, right? So just, can you explain to our audience a little bit more about what Legal 500 is? In Sorry, terms yes, of, of course. Because we um, are probably more familiar with Legal 500 uh, and Chambers kind of student versions. Indeed, indeed. Um, but what, why would clients be interested in that? Yeah, uh, I mean Legal 500 and Chambers in the, the non-student versions, if you like, um, profile either on a nation nationwide or, or regional basis, that their perception based on our submissions, feedback they get from clients, the marketplace, competitors, interviews, all that kind of stuff, yeah. to give a ranking as to where the firm is at. So, where, for example, we may be in real estate, let's pick on Birmingham again, just career, where we may be in real estate as a category in, in, in Birmingham, in the Midlands. Uh, and then it gives usually some, some profiles or mentions to particular lawyers uh, that have stood out. And also, if you can, so it's client confidential, of course, reference certain. Uh, transactions that we've been involved yeah. in and I think that's where it gives a real sense about what the firm does and, and who it works with and who it works for and what yeah. difference we've made to them. So whilst it might, might and of course you know, it's a lot easier these days because it's often online, uh, it's, much, it's it easy to get distracted with it but it's we're definitely worth having a look. Yeah. Definitely worth, and you mentioned for example about um, meeting the partners you may have met at uh, assessment centres or whatever it may be. Well, again, it, there might be a little write up about that particular partner yeah. in that particular legal firm under or whatever it might be if they're based in that particular region or nationwide. So it just again gives a flavour to the type of people you're, you're dealing with. Clients, I think, use it more for affirmation. I don't think cli many clients, dare I say, would admit to the fact you know, I go and look in a book to find out who I should work <laughs> with, but I think they find it reassuring. Yeah. I think it's more a reassurance thing. There will be some clients, particularly if it's a, if it's a more a distressed or a new area of law that they haven't had to commission law firms before, for, uh, and they might do a bit of digging around, which I'm sure they would do. Uh, for a lot of clients, it's, a, it's more affirmatory. Yeah. These are good people to work with and, and, and commission for work. So. Yeah. I think as well, because we're a national firm and we have so many locations in the UK, and the way that we recruit our trainee solicitors in, is into specific locations. Yes. So being able to go and say, oh, well, I'm really interested in the Solent office, which is based kind of Southampton Portsmouth way, um, and then learn a little bit more about the Too types much. of work and the profiles of the people Absolutely. that work there obviously gives a bit more insight. So then when you come to an assessment day, you're being assessed by people from our Solent office, you've got a good awareness of that location that you're and, 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 and now, of course, because of the, the website, you can search by a complete location, as you mentioned earlier. So you just put Solent in, list everybody that's based there that's yeah. got a website profile. Not obviously, obviously, not everybody in the firm has a website web profile, yeah. but at least it gets a sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, okay, so I can see that you have asked some questions, um, which is great. So let's see what we've got. So, um, so Maria has asked, is there a question that you wished um, had been asked 
If so, what would that be? And the answer to it, is there a question that you wish? Maria, I don't, I don't know what you're asking. <laughs> Send us the question again. Um, right, I'll answer some other questions, but I will come back to yours, Maria, if you okay. ask it again for us. Um, Pippa has asked, with regards to business development, I'm aware that she Smiths are working with an external company to develop a document review system for use in the commercial department, which I believe is currently used. Are there any plans to develop similar systems for use in every department? Okay. Um, I mean, this is a crossover, I think, between uh, everything from, I mentioned the various directorates before, from strategic change around project yeah. uh, and management stuff. IS, of course, because there's an IT, uh, mm -hmm. IS implication here. Uh, learning and development, because it's a knowledge management thing as well. Um, and also, obviously, from BD. I think where we can help with our client's experience going back to that particular mantra that we've got. Uh, and if it makes our life easier, makes the client's life easier, um, then I'm sure we, we are open and, and actively investigating the, the variety of these, these tools. Yeah. If it makes it easier for a client to make a decision, that's got to be a good thing. Uh, if it enables them and us to focus on doing some of that work in a more straightforward, transparent manner, giving more control back to the client perhaps, and us focusing on more strategic matters, that's also good. I'm not saying some of this work isn't strategic, by the way. So there's definitely benefits to be had. It is an incredibly dynamic environment. I think there's a lot of, lot of firms claiming a lot of things, a lot of their IS come artificial intelligence products at the moment. Um, and what I think we're good at is actually actively testing these things properly yeah. and going to market. We work collaborating with clients, or a number of clients which I can't mention the name of, unfortunately, where we have almost piloted these things with them to see whether it truly works rather than we've come up with this fantastic thing and launched it to the market. It's been tested, properly tested, so we can go out with confidence yeah. um, uh, that it's actually going to work uh, and the clients get some benefit from it. So it's far better we've got client advocates then we're saying it's wonderful, far better they say it's wonderful. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, quite an in-depth question, that one. Um, so, ta uh, Tangina says, hi Gaius, um, what is the ratio of time spent on existing clients versus new clients, and how do your team go about maintaining client experience? Okay, thanks Tangina. Um, I think it depends on the balance between the type of work we're getting in. I mean, you take, for example, our corporate side of life and the private equity, I appreciate a lot of technical phrases here, but private equity or venture capital, they're often very, very deal driven, i.e. client wants to acquire or dispose of something or invest in something, um, and it's a matter of focusing on that particular, trans yeah. particular transaction. From there, if it's a venture capital house we're acting for a private equity business, and presumably one does a good job of course then we want to develop that relationship further and get more instructions out of them. So I don't see them necessarily as completely separate yeah. activities. It sounds a bit of a, you know, uh, a smart answer in a way, but the work we do from a client, particularly a new client, is business development. Yes. And if we do it well, and they perceive that we've provided them strong commercial advice, if it's a commercial transaction, uh, on good value, classic, you know, on time and on budget, notwithstanding the dynamics of a deal these days, then one would hope when we do a post-transaction matter review with them about how was it for you, did we do what we said we were going to do, yeah. they're going to be advocates for us and we'll get more yeah. work out of it. So it's almost a continuum really rather than something something separate. There's no doubt of course that getting brand new clients and as the brand has increased uh, and its resonance in the market, we are getting increasingly uh, a number of you know, tender requests from people who've never acted before that are very large and dynamic organisations. That's Obviously that requires effort. Don't get me wrong, that does require effort to even get approached in the first place, then to re respond to the request for proposal. So a lot of time and effort has to go into those tenders. Mm. Uh, and we're very thorough at them. Again, my team work very strongly with the business on that in terms of rehearsals and terms of presentations and coaching in terms of making sure we're hitting the right buttons. It's a very collaborative thing with the partners. But that's probably the most extreme example. A brand new client we've never acted before that's in the FTSE 250 in the UK issues a panel review of who its legal providers are going to be and that lands on our desk, that's going to require a lot of effort. Yeah. Right, so, right, so right, right, how so. would we go out to new clients? Do we, um, as in if a, a, a 
a, a client that we don't work for is um, looking to tender for new law firms to, to come on board and give them legal advice. How would we hear about that and know that then we could go forward? Would we wait until a client approaches us to invite us to a tender, or do we almost go to them and proactively say we want it's to a work bit, It's a you? bit of both. Uh, I've got to be careful that it's not perceived as cold calling. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean that necessarily in a regulatory sense, although I think the SRA is... is particularly for individuals, of course, very private individuals, very conscious of that type mm. of activity. It's about ensuring that our partners in particular, as I said, there's an awful lot of potential in our existing client base, an awful lot of potential. Um, you know, the number of, to use the jargon again, service lines or individual legal disciplines provide to our clients. We could do more of that. Mm. We do well, don't get me wrong, we could do well. Um, but it would be lovely if you know, an existing client that's been with us for five years, we initially started out with employment and over the last five years it's extended to real estate, corporate, etc., intellectual property, whatever it might be. That's got to, got to be more cost effective for us. I presume we like the client and the client likes us. That's much easier to acquire that work than it is to get new clients with new services. Mm. It's a balance between the two. You don't want to just rely on existing ones or just pursue the new ones. Um, but I'm very confident there's a lot of, well I know, there's enormous potential for existing client base. Okay, thank you. Um, great question, thank you. Um, so, uh, Maria, uh, a different Maria has asked, um, if you were to describe Shoesmith's brand in three words, what would it be and why? Right, right. okay, good question Maria. Well I sort of, sort of did mention it earlier, but uh, I'll mention it again. We. And it's virtually the first thing you see on the website. Um, uh, it's about people, relationships, and results. That's, which is, I think, is very interesting. It was before my time. I can't say that I have created that, um, but it ties very nicely into the client experience piece of the vision. And it's about you know employing great people, which we do, working with our clients in a collaborative, relationship-driven way, and ultimately trying to secure and strive to get the best results for them, say whether they're an individual or, or, or not. Note that we haven't emphasised in there anything about size, scale, international reach, which I mentioned earlier, a lot of competitors do, or technical excellence. So not, we're not, sorry, we're not technically excellent yeah. uh, law firm, well, of course. But it's about that human side. Uh, and I think that's, that's really, really important. And we have to make sure we keep providing evidence about how we live those, those values. Yeah. Um, that's really, really important. Otherwise, it's just an empty promise. We don't get the connections that we need, so yeah. that's the particular focus. Also. I think um, if I was going to answer, it'd be a bit more of a cheat. So I would say, <laughs> um, I would say like um, like amazing, high quality, well known clients that you're really proud to kind of say that you hopefully if you can say it that you work with, yeah. um, <clears throat> or that you've been on to comment to, for example, um, like incredible modern offices um, and if you're following us on Instagram um, <clears throat> you'll see we've been sharing some of the pictures from our Milton Keynes Indeed, office we where we yes, moved yes, in on Monday so yes, really yeah, excited yeah. about that um, and more to come and then uh, so clients um, offices and and inspiring colleagues people who um, you actually enjoy working with on a day-to-day yeah. -day basis who are really motivational, encouraging of you. And we certainly see that at the junior level where we might have um, paralegals or people working within the support functions whose desire it is to become a trainee. Sure. And people yes, will yes. really um, back them and try and do everything they can to develop their experience yeah. and to, to help them reach their personal goals. So, And I think that goes every level. It's just <clears throat> obviously I see it at a junior level. No, indeed. I, mean, and the, the, I think the synergies between, I suppose, what you would describe as the the overall firm brand and the employer brand, they're, they're very synergistic. Mm. They, I mean, obviously, they shouldn't compete with each other. I think they're both mutually re reinforcing and supportive. Yeah. 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 Um, so, thank you for your question. Um, Reggie has asked, um, I was wondering if you provide trainees with BD training, i.e. how to pitch to different clients. Uh, thanks, Reggie. Uh, we do do a specific session, actually. Um, we created... Uh, I created a scenario which, uh, with a couple of colleagues in the relationship with Bid's team, whereby, without revealing too much in case you participate in it, but you are, some of our trainees act as if they're the imaginary general counsel of a large organisation that's going to conduct its first panel review, go out to tender, and you have to decide what you think the selection criteria should be and what the weighting should be. Again, to try and get our trainees to think about it from the other side's yeah. perspective, other side, the other client's perspective. Um, it's relatively quick, fun exercise, um, grounded in research, it's not just our view, it's based on some client feedback of course that we're undertaken over time and it works really well. So yes, we give exposure I suppose, in a, it's both a training 
training sets and a general awareness sense very, yeah. very early. So some of our viewers might actually be familiar with that because oh, we've right. used a version of it on some of our open days. Uh, okay. Um, because we think it's, it gives such a great insight right. for um, potential applicants as well. Um, but yeah, for trainees obviously coming in, it really puts at the forefront of their mind what is important right. to the client. Indeed. And I think um, there's around 22 different factors Reason. ranked. And I think number one is lawyer personality and relationship. So it shows you how kind of high this up... This is quite... The, yes, you wouldn't necessarily... Um, well, that's why it's a good exercise in a way, yeah. because it's not obvious yeah. which is the right ones. Don't know what order you would put them in. And there's yeah. lots of things you could choose. You could there choose. is then, as well, the learning and development team um, run a number of different internal yep. training courses um, for different levels of the business um, where you can learn more about different skills such as um, pitching, um, <clears throat> creating uh, like quotes for work. Not that you would be expected to do that no, at a training level, right. but obviously understanding how that is put together is really important yeah. um, and then we also have like a senior associate program so you, yes. then you're building in other skills around management and things as well so <clears throat> there are lots of specific yeah it's, it's, it's structured depending on we wrong to say the, the level you're at but it is almost at the level you're at um, and it's sort of an incremental approach isn't it so yeah. well, I think that works well I think what's coming out here as well is how um, how much BD works and um, overlaps a lot with the other Absolutely. areas in the firm yeah. and I guess that just shows what a firm we are for collaboration, so which is really good. Didn't even script that one, so that's <laughs> good. Right, so I'm going to just refresh and see if there's any more questions okay. come through. Um, if there is, you know, if you've got a question, please let us know. And if you've got any questions, you're not watching this live, if you're watching the rebroadcast or on YouTube, you can still ask a question and we will get back to you. So please don't feel if yep. you're not watching it live that you can't ask. Um, let's see. So, um, so original Maria. Um, oh no, is this second Maria? I think it's second Maria. She said, "Thanks for your answers. I'm closely following Milton Keynes' office transformation, and it looks like it's going to be an amazing office. I know. I cannot wait to get it, in there." It, it is. I, what I think is, this sounds a bit corporate speak, but I think it's important. I think, again, collaboration. We work very closely with the states uh, uh, in terms of the look and feel of the offices. What I think the firm is really good at is getting that balance right between. An environment that's really great to work in, and that clients want to come and visit, mm -hmm. and we can host host events, whether it's our own events or work with third parties on them. But it isn't too ostentatious. Yeah. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and it's really, really, really attractive. But we get the balance right. I think that's really, really important from the client's perspective. After all, ultimately, the client's paying for it. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, want, you want it fit, so that they want to come. You don't want them thinking this is this is over the top. So it's really, really good balance. So. Just saying there's some pink hexagons going on and some pink cushions and tassels and very Instagrammable, I think. Yes. And if you, um, if you are interested in working in Milton Keynes area, we do have two um, actual uh, insight evenings coming up. Well, one's an open day in conjunction with All About Law. So the application is still open for that. I'll post the link in the comments to the video. So if you want to apply to attend that open day, that will be in the new office. You'll get to see it, but obviously you'll get to hear from our people and learn a bit more about the training oh, yeah, contract. Yeah. Then do so. And then we also have an insight evening uh, around April time as well. So, uh, yeah, do let us know if you're interested, particularly in Milton Keynes. Um, so I think we've um, answered all the questions. You've okay. answered all my questions. Thank you so much. Um, it's been really interesting hearing a little bit more in depth about business development, how, how you interact with other areas of the, the firm to really um, grow and push things forward, which is fantastic. Thank you so yeah, much. It's been a pleasure. Um, just to let you guys know, we are going to be doing our next Facebook Live on Tuesday the 7th of April, um, so in around a month, 12.30 again, lunchtime slot, um, and I'm going to be talking to somebody from this office, from Birmingham, and we're going to be talking all about what it's like to live and work in Birmingham. So as well as, <clears throat> as, well as talking probably about some of the bits we find on Legal 500, um, we're also going to be talking about some of our favourite restaurants and places to eat and drink and the social life here, so a bit more of an encompassing view of the area um, don't forget also that our training contract application is open and the deadline is the 31st of May so you have a little while to still submit an application for that um, finally thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching okay cheers